Hey everyone, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the tiny, tiny versions of the Brie Baguette and hopefully grapes. Um, these are my charm size, and then these are the fingernail size down here. They're really tiny. Now, they're made pretty much the same way. So I'm going to try to um, try to keep it pretty fast, but basically, the Brie is plain translucent. And you take a little tiny circle, so I'm just going to smash it around to condition it here. But we roll it into a tiny little ball, and then I take white. I'm going to soften some white here. I didn't scrub my hands with uh, baby wipes and let them dry, but after softening, I thin it out with my fingers, squish it really tiny, and I wrap it around my little ball. So you're getting it wrapped. I'm just being really quick with this and not too careful because. Um, it's super easy, but you wrap white all the way around it, making sure there's no cracks or anything. Um, I didn't this time. Some of the translucent was showing, but, um, basically from here, I flatten it. And then I take a little slice out. Um... You can texture it with a toothbrush, just like the bigger sized brie. But um, I would go ahead and put the little slice. I bake it on the glass, but you can cut it. There you see the little um, translucent portion and the white portion. And there's the, the cheese itself. And I just bake them on a glass pebble to give them a slight curvature so it will fit on your nail a little better. So that's the brie. If you want um, a nice coarse texture, just take a toothbrush and start uh, texturing it. Now for the baguette, I take a tiny bit of white. It's usually about um, a quarter, a quarter to a third white, um, the rest translucent. I'm just doing a tiny, tiny bit here. <clears throat> and it's pretty much like the larger version too. But I take a small, tiny amount. I start by rolling it in ball, and then I will roll it into kind of a log shape. I'll get it pointy on one end. Um, if you do it long enough, you could get two slices out of it, make it pointy on the other end. Um, mix them thoroughly. I didn't mix them thoroughly because I'm just trying to be fast here. Um, I'll show you the cheese up closer since we just finished that and then I'll get it out of the way. So there's the cheese. Um, for the baguette, you if you mix it thoroughly, the inside portion of the bread will be that nice white color. So after after rolling it into a log, thinning out the corners, I press it slightly flat to give it the breaded shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it on top of my glass pebble. So from here, because it's so tiny, instead of the cross marks being made from um, a tool, I'll just do it with the safety pin. And I'll go down at a diagonal. So that creates the little lines. You can see it better there. Then I'm going to add the color. The color is yellow ochre. 
and rest. So there we go. And um, let me get uh, um, So I pick up the yellow ochre and I start painting it along the sides and the top. This had some dark color on this paintbrush. I don't know why. I think one of my children took it and was painting with it and didn't tell me. But um, I have more brushes, but this one was just going to be just for demonstrating this for the moment. So, so there we go. It was yellow ochre first, and then a little bit of rust now. And so there you get a nice toasty baguette. I'm not doing the underside. I do the sides. But I'm not doing the underside, because I figure without the pastel it will stick to your nail better. And um, then you could decide if you want to make it into two, or you could leave it a little bit longer. I chop it at an angle so you see the white. To texture the bread, I take a safety pin and go in circles to get you that little bready texture. And there we go. So the baguette is now done. And last is the grapes. I wasn't 100% um, thrilled with the grapes, which is why I was questioning whether I should um, do it as the nail tutorial or not this time. They're okay, but they're not great. I like them in the large size, but when it gets really tiny, it's harder to gauge what the translucent's going to be until you actually bake it. But I will show you anyway. So, basically, if you want to do one with greens, you take different shades of... Uh, well, you take... Uh, I use the Spanish moss, I believe is what it's called and it's in Primo, and I take tiny bits and mix it with translucent. Um, do a little bit of pink mixed with translucent if you want um, that color. If you're wanting the purple grape, I use various shades of purple with um, a lot of translucent. And I roll them out like you see. So it's basically just adding different amounts of translucent. So you have a number of them. I roll them very, very thin. <clears throat> and I take tiny little pieces from the tips of them. So here's a tiny piece. Roll it in a ball and place it. Now they will stick better if you put a little bit of TLS on your um, pebble. It'll help them stay a little bit better. But basically I roll tiny tiny little balls and I'll do them in the different shades. and start placing them in a triangular shape. You want to place the colors kind of randomly. I didn't get nearly enough little cuts. If you get the right colors, they'll be really, really pretty. My hand knocked into it and knocked them all off. I'm not too careful when it's this tiny about exactly the sizes. The TLS will kind of cook them all together as they're baking. And 
and I put a few on top. And we just keep on going until you have the grape shape that you want. Here is a finished one right here. It's real tiny. I was going to have him um, uh, paint on leaves, but he found some of the little corkscrews I did from my Mexican food um, one and wanted to use that as a little vine. So if you um, want the little bit of green, that's um, the citrus rind for the Mexican food to, uh, nail tutorial. So that's it, and um, I hope that you liked it. It's They're very, very simple, and it just takes a while to get the um, translucent color ratios right. Um, I wasn't unhappy, but I wasn't they didn't come out as realistic as I wanted. I really like the larger size grapes I do, but not the tiny ones. So here we are, and um, that was it. So I hope that you can get some use out of it, or it gives you ideas for other stuff. Um, the colors are nice together, especially in larger grapes, but for smaller grapes, just it's hard to tell how much translucent is going to pop through. So, um, good luck, and I will be back shortly with another tutorial.